Okay, let's get started. Riley? I'm sorry. I just wanted to do something different at the top of the hour. That woke me up. I know. I Well, part of it was that. I don't know. I'm still rethinking, you know, our intro, but I thought that was a good way to start, screaming your name. Yeah. It was good. You liked it? <laughs> we have kooky energy today. Why? I don't know. Well, I think because something's wrong. <laughs> um, we recorded an episode earlier, which I yeah. think we can just... Do a peek behind the curtain. That yeah. affects us negatively. Yeah. I'm also, personally you, tired. You whispered to me right when we started. You said, I'm tired. <laughs> from I'm you, tired. <laughs> and I didn't, I don't think I told you officially, but I'm so tired as well. I yeah. slept like shit. Yeah. I watched Shattered Glass. <laughs> and then, because I just did this thing now where I want to watch a movie. And sometimes if Megan's on her phone, I can just get away with putting on a full blown movie before she even knows it happened. Yeah. And then last night I went two for two, which has never happened before in my life. Wow. I put on shattered glass. Megan kind of liked it. And then I go, okay, I'm going to use all this power to do one more movie. And I started, I watched absolute power. Oh, wow. The Clint Eastwood uh, movie with Gene Hackman. Have you ever heard of it? When's that from? It's from like 1999. Oh, shit. It's very funny because... Was, I should have used that. Gene Hackman was a clue on Cinematrix this week. Oh, he was? And I had a hard time coming up with 1990s examples. Unforgiven. The Firm. The Firm, absolutely. Oh, my God. Gene Hackman was so good as a villain that you kind of want... like That you like a little bit. Yeah. The Firm, he's... he's Mean as hell to Tom Cruise, but he ends up being good, I think. Unforgiven, he's a mean old bastard. Mm -hmm. And then in Absolute Power, he's a corrupt president. What? But what's funny is that I think it was written like two years after the Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton scandal. Uh -huh. So Clint Eastwood was like, presidents can do anything. <laughs> They're... They're <laughs> abusing the morality of the office. <laughs> That's it's what a, radicalized him. Yeah, so he wanted to write a movie where it's the, the premise is wild. Have you ever heard no. it before? The pre so he I'll just be very quick. Clint Eastwood <laughs> is a jewel thief, and he goes to a prominent Democratic um, spender. What are those called? Democratic <laughs> people who spend a lot of money, like a George Soros type. Okay, he goes to rob <laughs> George Soros's house while he's gone, and he thinks that his wife and George Soros basically are on a trip. So he goes to rob their house because he's a very high class, famous jewel thief. <laughs> But unfortunately, the wife didn't go on the trip oh. to the Barbados. Do you have to kill she, her ass? No. She comes in, and she's cheating with this man on the George Soros-type figure. She's uh. cheating on the man, and Clint Eastwood just has to sit there in a seat watching these two people have sex. <laughs> it gets rough, really, really rough sex. The guy starts to choke George Soros's wife in a cheating kind of rough sex fiasco. And then all of a sudden, when she has a letter opener because she's going <gasps> to stab the guy in front of Clint Eastwood, the Secret Service pop out and they kill the woman because it's the president of the United States that was cheating with the woman. It's the president. So Clint Eastwood popped in when he was robbing a house. The president of the United States Talk was about cheating. wrong place wrong time absolutely <laughs> and then he has this moral obligation to tell the truth because they cover it up it's kind of like watergate uh, and also bill clinton it's like oh, a combo wow. of that of a president supercharged absolutely <laughs> fucking charged and then we, we started talking about this just because i couldn't fall asleep i had that absolute power energy i couldn't sleep a wink i was thinking about clint eastwood tossing and, and turning <laughs> I was like i was like absolute power corrupts absolutely wow which is, you know what i mean that's yeah. what the title is Whoa. based on so i i kind of like i just had a lot of energy and that's why i couldn't sleep but i, I love when i like will be on the couch and like all you know you sometimes you will just like throw on a movie and all of a sudden it's like and jimmy's like wait what the fuck did you just put on i'm like, like shh yeah like a movie no, let I, it happen that's exactly that's exactly what megan and i have in the house because we have to find common ground yeah but every once in a while if i can be a little sneaky and yeah. i just put on like ken burns civil war documentary or like yeah. shattered glass like last yeah. night and i i put on this is crazy you're gonna love this Two nights ago, I felt insane. And I just put on Sicario on Amazon Prime because I'd only seen it once in my life. Did it reframe your Villeneuve respect? No, actually, no. It uh, actually was. It it was exactly how I remembered it, which is that it's a movie that leaves me feeling like 
uh, hollow. Mm. Like there was not a lot to it. Do you like Sicario? I think I've only seen it the once, but the movie going, I remember seeing it at the arc light and it was a thrilling experience. Yeah. The movie going population and people that I really respect love Sicario. And that's why I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt and try again. But it left me, what's the right word? Tepid. Mm -hmm. I, I would never go back to it. I remember my original assessment. Um, it looks great, mm -hmm. and I like the plot in a way, but it just it leaves me with nothing. There's no like heart or soul there. I feel like, and that he leaves me cold. That guy, villain. Okay. So that's how I felt. Okay. But anyway, I mean, enough about my adventures <laughs> watching films. Um, we should we prepare our little troll cuties and Villa Rosa VIPs for what this episode is going to be like today? All right. So we're going straight into since it was the finale of New Jersey, we're going to cover that, and we're going to save Orange County again for next week and do like a doubled up next week yeah and the reason for, reason for that is that what oc is not that pressing we just didn't want to record until 11 p.m so yeah and also jersey i mean i don't know how you feel because we haven't talked about it yet but i think jersey's finale warrants some discussion yeah there's a lot of things to i mean if we're about. ever going to talk about it this is sort of the last chance yeah Yes, but I want to say right before we started recording, I got an alert on my phone, like straight from the horse's mouth. It said, there is going to be a wrap up episode of Jersey. Did you hear that? Oh, no. Yeah. After this episode that was the finale and they said, this was so good. Obviously, you know why we wouldn't have a reunion. That's what they like uh -huh. led us to believe. Andy said that there's going to be like a 45 minute special of them all reacting to the footage instead oh, of right. a reunion. Yeah, but like, what does that even mean? I don't know. I, I mean, we have. Why do they keep doing these weird little changes? Well, I think I don't know if we should do. Do you want to talk about the news first, and then we talk about that? Because sure, my whole my whole question about all of this is, and maybe we can return to it when we talk about it. But like, I don't see what about this finale, like, warranted stop everything right we can't have a reunion we'll never discuss this again and we're breaking up this cast obviously because you all watched that finale with your own eyes and so we have to reboot everything right i didn't get that sense at all from right. watching it not particularly more toxic than any other franchise or no. drama and some would like, say like potomac had has had worse, yeah. like, violent outbursts, oh. and oh, if, they if, never had that talk. Oh, yeah. I mean, if anything, I felt like it kind of, like a car dealer, reshuffled the deck a little bit. Mm -hmm. There was some Dolores Margaret stuff that I was like, whoa, I want to get into this, like, simmering feud. Now that, Mar now that Teresa can't justify all of her absolute hatred towards Margaret because Jackie did a lot of what mm -hmm. uh, she accused Margaret of doing, that it allows for some potential forgiveness there, even though I absolutely know that Teresa will never forgive yeah. Margaret. And then the Melissa and Joe stuff and Teresa dynamic is still interesting to me because I know ultimately something could happen that could yeah. bring them back. So I left this being like, I hate to put it on Andy Cohen, but again, I felt misled by mm -hmm. his, by the, what he said this finale was going to be this last supper where you'll all know why we can't move forward with the show right. based off what Danielle lunging across the table for one second when she right. got accused of her husband having man boobs. Right. Yeah. Cause I'm like Danielle and Jen, that's like a one season long feud. It's yeah. not like a historical no. thing that's, you know, I'm like, all right, well, one of them can go. <laughs> Jen. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah, absolutely. Jen Aiden can definitely go next season. So anyway, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that when we talk about, about the episode, but I yeah. just wanted to make sure that it was known that that was my thoughts. Like I, I, I felt again, like, um, that wasn't a proper, um, you know, that wasn't the anticipation of what I witnessed was not at all what we got. I, I thought that yeah. this was going to be some foundation shattering event. It was just a dinner that went kind of bad. Yeah. It did have a fun bombshell. Yeah. We'll great, a that. great twist, but that doesn't lead you to scrap no. <laughs> everything and start again. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw, I guess this is a blend between news and what we're going to talk about, but I saw, I can't remember if it was on Twitter, Instagram or whatever. So take it with a grain of salt, but cause I feel like there's so many rumors left and right about everything, but so I guess I'll just consider it a thought starter. The thing that I saw was like talks are that they're only going to keep Teresa and Dolores and fire everybody else. Okay. And then I think there was like a little additional thing that was like maybe like 
a third that would either be Rachel or Danielle, like a newbie. Okay. So the new era would, okay. So I think Teresa or Louie, you know, put that out. (laughs) Yeah. Because in no, I mean, (laughs) Teresa is probably, I mean, that, that I've been so wrong so many times, but Teresa is who I would put most of my money on as being the one that they can't um, work through this anymore with her mm-hmm. and they have to say goodbye to Teresa. Right. Because, because if the, yeah, if the call to arms is that there can't be this toxicity and leaking and like online rumor mill, private detective bullshit, like that's where that's from. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I don't believe that at all. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. I think, I think, I mean, I I do understand the justification for thinking that the lifeblood of New Jersey is Teresa and you can't do it without her. So you'd be willing to get rid of like Melissa and Joe and Margaret. Yeah. Why would you get rid of Margaret? (laughs) I mean, she just had a a showstopper of a a season. I mean, all of the iconic. She's playing the game. Yeah. All of the iconic moments of the season are from Margaret pretty much. So I I don't know. I, I can't imagine. But I think what Andy and Bravo are doing is just allowing this time to let it simmer because they don't need to start production anytime soon. And they're going to make a decision based off like the fan, the reaction to these episodes. And um, I don't know. They just, I think I listened to some interview where he just said like, I don't, we're not going to just rush into this. Like we're going to see what happens because uh, I think, I don't know. I mean, how we all feel about this season, it has to be, um, added to the discussion of what they do you know moving forward right so i just have no idea yeah i think it's gonna be yeah i think we said or i don't know if i said but if they wanted to give Teresa a little bit of a break Teresa and louie if that's where they feel a lot of the to- toxicity is coming from they could get that drama potentially with the wakilis to have the gorgas and the wakilis sort of provide that family drama yeah and then i do think that fessler rachel and danielle are very good additions i mean they're they're starting to blossom in a way i mean i i I really i think danielle and rachel are are pretty great yeah i feel like fessler's fizzling for me in the sense that she can't hack it like she always flees the scene and it's like this whole situation is disgusting and i'm like well then don't collect a paycheck yeah i agree with that (laughs) i was i was really surprised by her with her reaction at that at that she's dinner. like too respectable i think that she could I, I still think that she could be a friend of yeah because she be has margaret energy and it's nice to have additional margaret energy sprinkled throughout the 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 cast you yeah. know in a way yeah she doesn't need a uh, tomato so to speak no absolutely not um fessler really just to get ahead again but fessler kind of really st- switched or changed tunes halfway through the season yeah she really started the season being like i'm gonna you know maybe potentially sidle up with Teresa, yeah and like be friends with her and then by the end of this season she wants nothing to do with Teresa. yeah and she's fully back in margaret's <laughs> camp like Smart that ended. Move. Yeah. yeah yeah i will say ahead of it i mean we can get into it when we jump in but i feel like jackie had one of the worst played seasons i've ever seen yeah it it really was um, overall, right? Yeah, just like flop. Like she didn't get any airtime. She chose the wrong side, or at least like if she was gonna choose the diabolical side, then like be fucking diabolical. Then yeah, you know what she I mean. Really like wasn't. she was nothing. Yeah, and, and then she got outed in the end. Yeah, and then she got to be Margaret's like pinata for her yeah. last final boss move in the <laughs> finale, and made Jackie kind of walk her walk away in shame. And Dolores accused her of shitting her pants in a diaper. Like that's a bad <laughs> end to the season. And she was like for shuffling Jackie. to her car. Yeah, in uh, fear. Yeah, I mean it's Jack. What Jackie did. I think this is like high level is that she knows she's on the chopping block. She's been on the chopping block for multiple seasons. Yeah. They gave her the friend of uh, edit or, you know, they let her be a friend of, and she thought to capitalize on storylines is she thought that an alliance with Teresa would be beneficial, but then it completely um, affected everything that you knew about Jackie It immediately cast her as a hypocrite. And she went against Margaret, who I would consider her actual friend. Right. And then you don't want to fuck with Margaret because she ethered her. Yeah. She sent texts of all the people <laughs> that they've talked shit about together. Yeah. Margaret was willing to go there. And yeah, Jackie 
lost bad yeah this season there's like no doubt in the world that she would not be returning you think because she did have a pivotal part of the season it was almost like accidental i've never seen like her energy even when you think of like famous flop artists (laughs) like i consider well i don't want to say like the biggest flops but like jackie almost i've never seen that much of a flop yeah like one season to have that much like where you're like kind of the butt of everyone's joke and even when you're trying to align with Teresa and Jen Aiden they're kind of making fun of you behind the scenes and they don't give a shit about you you know yeah like that's a that's a rare thing that she did I know it's bizarre it's like what was your strategy what was her strategy to just to to see how far she could get in her alliance with Teresa and not piss anyone else off, but just see how many scenes she could get from having this change of heart. But then she ended up squandering all of her relationships with Dolores and Margaret by all of the moves she made. But I don't <laughs> think that she intentionally wanted to betray Margaret and Dolores and everybody at the start of the season. But when all of the previous horrible things that she said about all the cast members, once Margaret put those in play, everyone just hated Jackie. Yeah. She satisfied no one. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're probably right. I don't think that she would ever get another season. But I just, I mean, I don't know. Was there any other news before we talk about that? <laughs> uh, I feel like not too much is going on. Like I checked in real quick on um, Lindsay Hubbard. She's baby fitting her apartment, which I then realized I had never thought about the fact that her baby is going to live in the room that her and or Carl would lock themselves in while they, when they were fighting. And I'm like, I didn't really put two and two together that the baby would live in that very apartment because she never moved. Right. We, which room? Like is the it, second bedroom. That's the one where they go and they lock themselves in. When Lindsay, I don't want to make light of this. When they're scared of each other. When she said it was, this is, I'm going to be a safety. little offensive, but it's like in The Shining, she yeah. said when Carl was banging on the door and it was like here's, here's carlito here's carlito so you're saying that the fact that it would basically be like having your nursery in the cupboard where <laughs> shelly duvall had to go hide in the shiny right yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah <laughs> um well i i only i'm only on Lindsay's side because I, we megan and i built a nursery yeah and that's also you know where we each of us <laughs> go in hide to either each other. cry or scream or yeah. you know or or get away from the screaming <laughs> onslaught. So I kind of understand <laughs> where Lindsay's coming from, but Yeah, she was saying that um there she was talking about the layout and she was going to have a twin bed in there because she's going to have a baby nurse live there and she said a baby nurse living with me, but she used no us language. So I don't know if she's just being, you know, brown heart emoji private about Oh, right. that guy right or if they are indeed not moving in together i'm a little curious about that but i guess it is a brand new relationship so i suppose they could wait <laughs> yeah i don't know what was that guy's name again something koofy oh, right, right, right. yeah like jason travis and, taylor 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 koofy is that what it was yeah would you ever i know that this is like i'm i'm um just gonna hit you with this question but oh. would you ever be Lindsay's um Baby nurse? <laughs> <laughs> Just no idea what I'm doing. I'm like, um... well, she was. I, I, um, she. I'm her close friend on Instagram, and she uh, was putting a call to see who would be. A I could use the cash. <laughs> she said, "I mean, I. It's at. It's. It's. Um. I mean, free rent at a ten thousand dollar a month apartment. I'll just say this on the, you know, the pot, the main feed, but it's because if anybody wants to apply, but it was Lindsay Hubbard." baby nurse at gmail.com and anybody oh. can anyone can apply so okay i don't know it would be in new york yeah bye <laughs> <laughs> okay so that was what any 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 other notable stuff in that uh nursery i'm um, only interested because of all things we built a nursery yeah you know megan and i so it's kind of like it is on my mind right. the stuff that you put in there yeah she said she's like this week gonna be six months along so like that's amazing not that much further to go so she's She's gonna be like quite pregnant at the summer house so she's having a wonderful like november baby right i guess so what's the math on that it's gonna her baby's gonna be born right between you and i's birthday yeah right (laughs) december 20th and then yours is 24th well 
yeah, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, I don't know if she was, she did the little, what's that, um, that symbol called where it's like the, it's like this wavy. Let me, let me see what you're doing. It was like this six, like. Give or take six months. Oh, oh, you roughly. know what I mean. Oh, so, so it like, kinda lets, who it, knows? It's well, I am. If I'm, I'm just going to assume. I think it'll be right between you and I's birthdays. Yeah, which will be kind of nice. Well, good. So she's well. So Lindsay's doing good. She's at the summer house right now. Yeah, I'm just curious, very curious of what that is going to look like. The first pregnant summer house guest. I think it'll be cool. <laughs> Don't you think? In what way? Just. I think it's so fun when someone is just pregnant randomly <laughs> with a bunch of people on a cast. There's precedent for this, right? Like what? Uh, wasn't Bethany pregnant during Roni? <laughs> oh, turtle time. Yeah. Yeah. She was pregnant with... Um, Bryn Hoppy. Bryn Hoppy. And then who else? Oh, Janet. Oh, yeah. That was fun. She was kind of fun. So yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's um it's untrodden territory on on Summer House for sure, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, it will be interesting. And then um, I don't know. I feel like there hasn't been that much shit going on. Everyone's no. like on vacation. I know. I've been looking. I even look for <laughs> for news to report on. Yeah, for Turtle Time. And Amanda just... and Danielle are at the same. They're bridesmaids in the same wedding in Italy. I saw that this I, week. Yeah, I love that everyone in the world went to Europe this summer. Yeah, it's pretty. Cool. Happens every year. That everyone goes to Europe. Yeah. Wow. I have. Someday I know. You know, I will. I think. Yeah. I'm now mad. Like I feel like I went too soon because now I get it rubbed in my face and I'm like, fuck, my trip was so long ago now. Do you get sad when you think about it? I want to go back. Do you still, are you able to at all, like, <laughs> put yourself back there and harness that feeling that you have Draw over there? Draw from the memories. Or is it clearly in the past and you can't soak anything back <laughs> Maybe when you're on pat leave, I'll just fly back over. Damn, that would be nice. <laughs> just by myself. Okay, I'm, a, yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to be on pat leave for, like, two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right well um, uh there was there yeah the, the other news i mean the only thing i was going to tell you just privately but i'll tell you on mic is that i started my because i know that you and i are kind of fizzling out with shows to watch yeah so i said what the hell can i do to keep turtle time a, a um what's that called <laughs> like <laughs> what the hell can can't I do? even talk anymore <laughs> what the hell can i do to turtle time to keep the fire in us yeah you know and i said why don't i watch this shit that people say is good that's definitely one of the franchises definitely one of the top 10 right don't you think miami (laughs) until that second you didn't say what you were talking about (laughs) sorry i started watching real housewives of miami because i wanted new fire yeah between us and just in case if we ever need to talk about it and um we raced through it i watched the first i'm on the halfway through the fourth season of miami so i made it through the original airing of it like in 2012 and now i'm in the new reboot uh, yeah. of miami and i'm loving it i don't know what the hell was ever stopping me i love marisol yeah well i'm conflicted about marisol i absolutely love lisa hotstein mm-hmm. she's like a diamond in the rough <laughs> i really i think she's so great her and lenny's beautiful love yeah I absolutely love that and then adriana is fun as hell to watch yeah and uh, who am i missing alexia has a very interesting home life that i'm always yes. you know interested to learn more in so it's great yeah I need to revisit, I was saying this before, but I watched it at the time when it was on and I enjoyed it then. And then I've sort of like here and there watched the newer version, but I need to do a full rewatch all the way through. Um, Because yeah, I don't really understand why it never performed or why it was kind of considered an outlier. I know it ended very like uh, the third season was really good. Like, it was totally on par with the quality of early seasons of any other franchise. Yeah. I read that just the ratings were just much lower for some reason. Yeah. But it seems odd. And now everybody loves it, and they're they're glad that it's back. So it's kind of a bummer that they missed those pivotal six years or so. Right. Um, No, I'm, like, happy to have it there. And then, because I really just cannot get myself on board for Dubai. I know. But I also don't feel like I even hear the fanfare of Dubai like I do with Miami. No. Like no I only hear it from like the Bravo accounts I that know. are like have a gun to their head. Me too. Yeah. I don't want to name <laughs> names, but that's 
only where I hear the good Dubai. Yeah. They, they, uh, here's what I heard. It's like they use the same um, fresh and like it's about nothing. And it's the fights are very yeah. just low level and petty. And that's all the shit that they said about new Roni. Yeah. And I'm like, you're using the same like terms that yeah. you use about how like fresh this is. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's code for like it's not that great i don't remember if i said this last week because i don't remember anything we say but i sent you a tweet where someone called the new roni phony yeah you uh i forget who that was too and i was like i'm gonna start calling it phony right you know that this is real and like that's like coming back in a month i know does that make you sad i don't want it i well the only thing that makes me well a couple things make me sad uh, that first of all that they didn't change anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then the second thing that really made me dismayed is when um Cy went on <laughs> jeff lewis's podcast and when the they thought the mics were down so i thought the mics were down she <laughs> talked about how absolutely boring this season was yeah and how they're trying to make the new cast member work but she's not doing anything and she completely sucks yeah and like for Cy to say that for her to call this season boring yeah. it must be so fucking boring gotta be bad yeah. yeah oh my gosh speaking of jeff lewis did you see on i saw on tiktok some guy it was popping up that this random guy on tiktok i don't know who he is and um who was it it was shannon bedore i think jeff lewis and who were they with uh oh my gosh i'm trying to visualize there was someone else famous that i can't think of who it was or at this like spa like wellness retreat where like you only drink juice and um shannon looked like she was having fun really yeah jeff lewis shannon yeah this someone else tiktok person and then who was it? it wait what are they doing just having fun yeah it's like a sober oh. like spa wellness um yeah that's really nice well good that's good for i'm glad that shannon's doing that she was wearing a beauty lab and laser t-shirt that's oh i remember i think you sent yeah. me that but i also don't remember who the third person was yeah um jerry o'connell <laughs> it was like um Fuck, who was it? It's going to bug me now. Um, Do you have to go to somebody's Instagram? Um, if so, yeah. I can vamp about absolute power. <laughs> yeah, please. So, Clint Eastwood. Oh, it was Beverly D'Angelo. Oh, I, that's great. I yeah. like her. <laughs> Beverly D'Angelo from... Um, from uh, The Vacation Films. Yeah. Well, good. That is great. Well, good. Did We, we exhausted all the news that we had to talk about. The burning... <laughs> The burning news that was kind of um, you and I were <laughs> champing, <laughs> champing at the bit yeah. to talk about, right? I'm trying to think. I'm like, what else do we usually say? <laughs> I feel bad. Well, I'm not going to say that. Obviously, I won't say that this is like that. This is like a shitty episode. I would never say that, but I'm just going to say that we did. You know, you and I are kind of. I'll just. I'm going to put it on me. I slept like shit. <laughs> we have no, no, no. But I'm just going to say it. We've slept like shit. We have a, Megan and I have a baby on the way and I was maybe tossing and turning a little bit from stress. And yeah. so you and I are doing sort of a breezy episode of just about yeah. Jersey to kind of just make life easier for us. Does that make sense? I don't understand. Wait, <laughs> Wait what do you mean? You don't understand that this is just... what. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I just mean maybe we're not... Maybe we're not hitting all of our marks. What are you saying? Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, good. No, this is good. I one. Pro- yeah. No, we're doing very good. I was just gonna. I say, just wanted to see how long you would spiral for. Yeah, I really am spiraling. Do you mind, Amy? Can I ask you something? <laughs> Do you mind if I take a certified turtle piss break right now, and then you and I can come back? And I swear, I'm gonna take. We're gonna get it together. Espresso. I'm gonna calm my mind. And we will come back and we'll have one of the best episodes of Turtle Time of all time when I come back. Okay. Sounds good? Yep. We're hey, back. Hey, thank you for letting me do that. Of course. I went to the bathroom, or sorry, Certified Turtle Piss Break, and I feel a lot better. I'm oh, good. Yeah. And, yeah. and well, I'm not going to say. I, I was going to say <laughs> a huge distraction right now for me <laughs> is that they're putting tint all over my car windows, which you know. So I just wanted to tell if if people are wondering what the hell's going on. It's just because in the in the driveway, uh, 
my car windows are being t- <laughs> t- tinted. So, <laughs> so I just I want to explain why. <laughs> I just want to explain Should what's going on. Should we invite him in? What? That man? <laughs> well, I think if it, on YouTube you'll see, you can kind of see this guy who's tinting my <laughs> car window. When was, we're doing it because of the heat and also if we're going to be with child, we want the baby car to on have. Board. Yeah, total baby on board. We actually found the perfect bumper sticker. It's Little Hobbit on board. <gasps> Cute. And it has a, like one of the Hobbit children. Have you ever seen <laughs> them? Yeah. Yeah. Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a true sticker? <laughs> <laughs> i'm i i don't want to get a sticker because i'm surprising you don't Megan want to put a it. bumper sticker on a bentley <laughs> right i mean i have a beautiful car and i don't want it to be sully but also i'm surprising megan with the hobbit on board baby hobbit on board so if she doesn't like it i don't want it to be stuck to the car you oh. know what i mean okay i used to have a bumper magnet oh that's so much better I hate putting stickers on stuff. <laughs> I had a Obama 2008 wow. um, bumper magnet that got stolen at Coachella. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. That's the time and place. That is, that really paints a picture. Yeah. Someone said, I want to honor Barack Obama <laughs> so bad right or now. Or they hated him and they were like, get this shit off of here. You think? At Coachella? McCain head. Absolute McCain head. Could you imagine? Have you been seeing Megan McCain trying to pop off on twitter and everyone's like boo oh what's she been saying she's complaining about the camouflage hats oh she was like just you can't pander to people with camouflage and everyone's like shut up like hipsters and gays wear camouflage now we've taken over goodbye in waltz i don't want to get too political but waltz walls is allowed to have that right yeah he hunts yeah i saw but I it's saw like the- it's based off of like that chapel roan hat midwestern princess i haven't seen that there's chapel roan merch that says midwest it's a um, camouflage hat in an orange it says midwest princess wow um is she from the midwest i guess wow is the middle i, I don't want to even or she ask. has an album called that i think oh is the so Mid- you're either brat or a midwest princess that's amazing it was her summer i think for, yeah right before she has the biggest Lollapalooza crowd of all time really yeah there's it's a movement Chappelle Roan had the biggest crowd at Lollapalooza history, bigger than Blur, bigger Dave than Chappelle Oasis. Roan. Wait, uh, is, how do you say it? I'm sorry. Chapel. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean that. Wasn't even a joke. Chapel Roan had the biggest crowd size, bigger than I read that. Blur, Oasis, anyone, Jay Z when he performed there, <laughs> bigger than all of them. She's huge. Wow, from TikTok. Something's right? happening. Do you think she's bummed out that all of a sudden we all got swept away with Charlie XCX fever? I think she's playing the long game. Like, I feel like the brat is sort of like burning hot and quick. Yeah. And she like has sort of a future that's happening. It won't just be summer. Yeah. It's kind of like it could go into fall or winter. Yeah. Who command, who is going to control the winter? <laughs> God. You mean around Christmas time? No, I love that, but I'm just saying, what artist comes in oh. and they say, I want December? Who knows? Like Not Katy Perry. Why? She she's, can't win. Wait, what do you mean? She's summer? She's she so can't s- get anyone excited about her album, no matter what she does. I, oh, oh, right. I haven't I haven't tuned in to <laughs> Katy Perry. I know that the that one song people weren't, they, they didn't like very much. Yeah. Pandering, I guess. Woman's World. Woman's World. Well... Who wins the winter? <laughs> we'll see. Do you <laughs> think Teresa months. likes Chapel Roan? Absolutely. Uh, I, can, my, I think I will say Megan played a one Chapel Roan song for me. And uh, I think I liked it. I don't remember. Pink Pony Club. Yep. I remember. Is it, is it kind of ornate, <laughs> operatic? Oh. No? Oh, H-O- Hot To Go. Is that one? Um. Let me, I don't want to play one of her songs now, but I think I heard it and I, I think I liked it just for that one little peek I did into it. Okay. All right. So she could, you're saying she has a chance at commanding the winter again, right? Nonstop for the next however many months. Amazing. Well, good. Well, um, do you want to, I mean, I guess speaking of that, do you want to talk, <laughs> do you want to talk about- Brilliant. Uh, do <laughs> 
Do you want to talk about this very final seeming, almost the end of New Jersey as we know it? Yeah. Seeming. It's literally called When All Is Said and Done. Yeah. And the intro was black and white. And they kept showing clips in black and white as if it was in memoriam. Yeah. Like it was, yeah. Like this is it. Say goodbye to this cast because what you will now witness is the downfall of New Jersey. Right. It's, if 13 you, episodes only. That's bad, obviously. That's very bad. But if you, you and I. Like, we, what happened while they were filming that the producers had to call to the network and be like, we cannot film longer than this? You know what I mean? Like, was it, or was it they shot for a normal amount of time and they could not scrap or they couldn't put together 22 episodes? Well, okay. 13 episodes is a bad sign. It's like half. Yeah, because we we've we're in unprecedented territory. I mean, we were talking about when Vanderpump Rules was fifteen. We yeah. were like, that's a short as hell season. Thirteen is barely nothing. We're getting back to the like first season yeah. territory. Of Usually all these with franchises. reunions, it's like twenty three. So it's I mean, when LV the producer had to come in yes. towards the end, I do imagine that there are a lot of things going on behind the scenes that they all are sort of alluding to where it's like, hey, we had two fights that you know about that happened that we have to like pull people apart. Yeah. So maybe that level of antipathy for each other is unprecedented. But I was going to ask as a thought experiment, if we didn't know anything about what Andy Cohen had said or any plans of what to do with this season. And you and I were just watching this and we got to that finale. Would you ever in your wildest dreams think that this is the end? Would you predict (laughs) the end of, of New Jersey from this season's arc? No, but I would be like, why was it so short? I would, I would say why it was so short, but, but just generally, did you, do you think that this season's quality and where they got to at the end warrants a major upheaval with this franchise no i mean yeah because i i thought going into it hearing how bad it had gotten or whatever when you actually watched it i i was like that this doesn't seem that out of character to the way most of these things go so i don't know like what is actually happening that is making that so yeah. Like, I feel like there has to be on the ground, behind the scenes, like everything we've talked about with the leaking and the press and the the private investigators and all of that, that I think making the show is yeah. impossible. Okay. It's not necessarily what we're watching, but it's like the creation of the show is miserable, I think. I think that's what happened to OG Roni, too. Yeah. I think that whatever was going on behind the scenes was like way more toxic than what we were actually seeing and so they kind of had to nip it in the bud and you could tell when lv walks out at the end she was like ripping her hair out yeah like she was just so fed up with this cast but then i was thinking like if they would have gone to that haunted house (laughs) in where was that berkshires if they would have gone to that haunted house in berkshires and it hadn't burned down that would have been three more episodes of content at least No, typically I don't think that they would let a burn down house affect the, an entire season. <laughs> they of were filming. just like, fuck it. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. That, that kind of shows that it was so toxic. That they didn't even want to create Rebook. an alternative <laughs> trip and they, they didn't really care about the finale. Yeah. Because it was, it would obviously have been great to watch them all go to the Berkshires, no matter what happened. We right. know that it would have been great. So. Oh my th- God. We didn't bring up that there's going to be the, uh, um bluestone manners show oh that was that was a big news item we were supposed to bring up (gasps) we skipped it what is it true yeah bluestone manners yeah and it's like vanderpump villa but with dolores running around durinda oh 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 my god i'm sorry i was thinking dolores going to the berkshires durinda her who i think was supposed to pop in when they went to the berkshires and then it got canceled Dorinda, kind of like in UGT, or I'm sorry, Ultimate Girls Trip Season 2, when she was kind of inviting them all to her house. Yeah. It's going to be like that, except she's com- having hosting parties and stuff? I guess. Okay. I think it's on Peacock. So that's what they're going to do with Bravo talent that they have put out to pasture. <laughs> they're going to give them 
spinoff shows. Right. And then did you hear the other one that Bravo is going to do a Love Island type oh, yeah. spinoff with Bravo celebrities that aren't Luan. married yet to have them date like a kind of Love Island dating show for Luann and whoever else. Who was it? So they're creating, yeah. they're creating new shows to keep these Bravo celebrities in the Bravo tent once yeah. they've outworn their welcome on the Housewives franchises because right. they don't want them to go anywhere else. Yeah. I saw um, the Tamra clip I was listening to earlier. Um, she was saying how apparently Shannon got her DUI, like the day before Tamara left for Scotland for the traders. So I guess she didn't, they didn't talk for like three weeks after that because she was in the traders castle or whatever. Oh, wow. And she said that she ruminated on what to do with the Trace Amigas while she was away at the traders. So she had that sort of traders <laughs> clarity of mind. Yeah. And when she came back, she said the Trace Amigas is over. Yeah. I will say whenever I talk to people in the wild, a lot of people watch traders that don't typically watch housewives. And so I actually do think it's a great tool for Bravo to bring in new viewers, which probably happens in the other direction. Maybe like people wanting to watch like Survivor or mm -hmm. those other shows. Um, but I think a lot of people that love those competition type shows could be drawn in by seeing these people and falling in love with them or you know, being scandalized by them. Like Phaedra. Exactly. Which, speaking of... Coming back. Everyone was so blown away by Phaedra and Traders that then Andy and Bravo said, we got to get... If Atlanta is um, having some trouble, let's just get Phaedra in there from the We reserves. did have news, I guess. Why didn't we say that at the <laughs> in the first half hour? Has anyone that talked was, to Candy? That was a lot of news. Candy is going to feel betrayed. I wonder, have, has anyone asked her? I'll ask her. <laughs> I was going to say this to end this news segment. I was going to say, I know I say this a lot, but if you and I, I'm going to say this about New Jersey. If you and I had an hour with Melissa, Joe, <laughs> and Teresa, mm. and Louie, mm. do you think we could properly mediate that? <laughs> Two outsiders, <laughs> completely, that they can fully trust don't you think we could probably get somewhere with them and, and bridge that gap not freaking likely why based off <laughs> what we've seen it would get dirty real fast who would they, between them yeah i just think that they, they, everywhere they're going they're such partial hosts but they've never just been in one room with just you and i and i think i i really have hope that you and i could do something like that <laughs> i do think i feel um, I wonder if Teresa actually does get fucked over by Louie and has to admit it and break up with him. If then she would, they could rebuild. Cause Louie has been a detriment to detriment to the family getting back together. But yeah, in this but episode, their problems obviously predate him. So who's to say, but Louie is doing like we oh you know another thing which I'm glad we're talking about this is that you were sending me clips of this exclusive Louie interview on Teresa's podcast and the way he was talking about Teresa it I, like you can see why Teresa is doing backflips for Louie because he's like every single minute he's saying you're one of the most iconic people <laughs> that I've ever seen in my life like he's just like love bombing love bombing yeah. Absolutely love bombing He's her. like, I could cry even just talking about you. You're so fucking amazing. They had to stop recording because he was crying so hard about his, about thinking he was his like, I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating. She's like, I know you're so sweet. So it's going to be hard. I mean, it's going to be hard for Teresa to, to want to, unless he uh, lets the mask slip at some point, if there is a mask. He's that's going to be hard to counter that amount of like adulation and love from someone. I guess until you find out that they're doing devious <laughs> shit on right. the side. Right. Yeah. God bless. I hope so, so. You don't so but you don't have faith that you and I could resolve that. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's hop in here. It starts out with Jen Fessler going to Margaret's house. Um she has cronuts, banana pudding, wine, which turns out to be disgusting apparently. Were you excited to see cronuts back? Because <laughs> you and I um Can I be honest? They don't look that good to me. Oh, you never had them? 
Um, maybe I did at one point. I'm cool with just a donut. I had cronut fever. You did? Yeah. Are you, 2000, you're a real sweet tooth. 2015, cronuts were just coming to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I do love banana pudding, though. They had that magnolia banana pudding. I like that. Me too. I love that. But you, so you never really, you said you might have tasted one, but I was just, I hadn't heard of them since I had cronut fever 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they had that. <laughs> she, they go over the f- uh, funeral flowers gag. Fessler Jen's doesn't like, like it. No. Fessler pushes back. She's like, this is too toxic. Even She's though it like, was funny. Yeah. Margaret goes, I thought you'd have a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, Margaret's like, I'm not worried about whatever the fuck Teresa says the bombshell was totally not worried about it dolores joins well yeah margaret says i don't run in the shadows like (laughs) Teresa. yeah which i I have to i don't know do you put stock in that that she's (laughs) not doing like we know she's in the shadows a little bit but she's not doing what louie and Teresa are doing behind the scenes i like i said when we were talking about this weeks ago i'm like yeah she probably fucking did talk to the ex why is that a problem they're enemies who cares yeah no it's right that she did it (laughs) like whatever um then dolores joins um margaret sage is the house and uh they're talking about the meetup and how dolores is like she was saying that you are working in collaboration with louis x and here um margaret says she never spoke to the ex before new york aka the reunion Mm -hmm. and then once in 2021 Right, didn't she say? Or did she even yeah, admit that? Um, I don't remember. I she think says she says in here. 2021, I reached out to her and then never again until right before the reunion. Right. But either way, it's like you reached out to her. You she know? says only on DM. Yeah. And that she, the ex, validated all the Bo Deedle shit. Yep. Which we were talking about it here. Megan, your wife, said that she looked into Louis' ex and the version that she saw online. Um, was that Louis X is a therapist yep. and that apparently she had a um, client or a patient that was coming in and acting weird and asking questions like in the other direction, yeah. like sort of being like, what would you do if your ex did X, Y, and Z? And then when she tried to charge the client, it was like a weird prepaid credit card. And long story short, it was like someone sent by Bodidal yeah. to get tea during therapy sessions, which if that's true, I'm like, that world is so diabolical. Yeah. And I believe it. They originally said it was actually Bodidal in disguise. But then <laughs> the, I think they clarified the He's story. wearing that he the sent, Groucho glasses. That he sent someone. Yeah. So like she was just having a normal therapy session. And then the... Bo Deedle's, um, what's it, proxy, would say, well, what about what was going on with your ex, Louie? It's like a full Russian spy. Yeah. And so then that is what prompted, if this is to be believed, that's what prompted uh, at Louie's ex fiance to put the restraining order on him. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, and then um, this is where uh, Dolores brings up the pre-reunion summit is what she called it like well you were doing your own sort of yeah whatever calculation this is true Uh, dolores is kind of advocating a little bit for teresa's side she's saying it's this wasn't a burn summit um and margaret said i would never have a burn summit like that ever and then and then dolores says kind of like devil's advocate but i think it's a fair point yeah she says well, some people might consider what you did before the reunion to be a burn summit. And yep. then uh, Marge has a um, euphemism. It was a reunion review. Right. <laughs> Which I'm like, is that a phrase that is commonly used? I think she I think she coined that in the moment. That yeah. reunion re- review. Because yeah. she wanted to, to give it a name. But Dolores then, is like, th- yeah, by the way, thanks for inviting me to that. And she goes, I told you to come. You said you didn't want to come. And... This is where Dolores goes fucking insane. Yeah, you say it. She she goes, you fucking lying cunt. You never fucking said that to me. Like, she, there's like veins in her neck. Like, she's so pissed off immediately. Like, yeah. I've never seen someone get that mad that fast. And um, Margaret's like, I told you two days before that you could come if you want. And she goes, liar, liar. 
Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I never fucking said that. And the amount of fucks I listened to the uncensored, Dolores was cursing up a fucking storm at Margaret. And, you know, I think it's worth dissecting what is going on here. Um, I think that, uh, I think both probably like it probably ha- like, do you think M- Margaret probably did say that this was happening, but that she didn't classify it as a reunion review. And that's what Dolores is sort of taking umbrage with. Right. The fact that Margaret would paint her with the brush of going to a Teresa hate summit. And I think Dolores is like, not fear, but her alliance to Teresa is so strong that she doesn't want to be implicated even for one second Mm -hmm. in a reunion review or Margaret's burn summit. So she's really fighting back against that accusation as hard as she can. Yeah. I know. It was crazy. Even like Margaret's like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? But then also I think that Margaret saying, I invited you to the reunion review. And then Dolores saying, you never invited me to a reunion review gives both of them plausible deniability to say that that's not what you classified it. Margaret made that up in the moment. Right. She might've invited Dolores to her house. Like super offhand. But Dolores did not know. The assumption was not that we are all gathering together to unite as a force against Teresa and Louis for this reunion. Right. right. Um, we even get an on my kids. Uh, was that from Dolores? I think I be- I believe I believe Dolores more. Well, I don't know. I'm like, do I just believe Dolores because she's getting so fucking pissed? Right. But I also, Margaret lied just two minutes earlier about the timeline with her interacting with the ex, which I don't care about. But I do note that she lied. Right. So is Margaret capable of lying in this moment to Dolores about casually, offhandedly telling her about the reunion review? I feel like she probably let her know in the most half-assed way imaginable that she can say, I told you, but it was not made clear. Margaret also said that it, the conversation when she called Dolores, Dolores was out with Teresa and Jay, Jen Aiden. So you obviously can't have a very good nuanced conversation when you're at, when Dolores is at lunch with two of Margaret's biggest rivals. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's, she says she's offended by being accused of lying and she stands by her story. Jen Fessler mediates and it yeah. sort of gets squashed. Like they're like, whatever they do like a three way hug and, Mar- Margaret is really also, um, she's, she got called a sea bomb yeah. by Dolores and, and you can tell how shocked Margaret is that yeah. Dolores went at her like this. Yeah. She's stunned. And she says to, she says to Jen Fester, she's like, I've never been, I thought we were very good friends. I never thought I'd be called a lying sea bomb, uh, <laughs> by Dolores in my life. She goes, I almost cried. And yeah. You can tell that Margaret's like almost on the verge of tears with yeah. how Dolores handled this conversation. Taken aback. Very taken aback. Yeah. Um, then we go to Rachel's house where Danielle and Melissa are coming over. Um, she says, John Fuda, upon further inspection, has no allergies. Potentially a bone fragment went down his throat. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what I thought when we were talking about this. I thought that quite possibly one little splinter went up his nose or in his mouth when he was doing eight shots. Because if he has no allergies, <laughs> what could have happened? Right. Um, and then they're talking about the lawyer meeting. Melissa says that that woman, the ex, has reached out to all of us. Like she's been trying to get around to everybody. Yeah. And through DMs, she says certified letters. And that one time Melissa was out on the town and that Louie's niece came up to her and was like, you should be very afraid. Yeah. Do you, you put sock in that right yeah i mean he scares me like i you cannot tell me he's not unhinged what what is really going on with louis he's insane insane yeah (gasps) i think he's nuts insane arkham (laughs) like like arkham asylum bad yeah like jack nicholson in the shining (laughs) no I think he's, I think he has a full fake persona. Yeah. I think he's fully faking. Anytime he's on camera, he, he does the Joker smile and says, everything in my life is right. And he only talks in positive, 
beautiful flowery language to appear like he's one of the greatest guys on earth. But then in that same posturing facade where he thinks he's speaking with these grand, eloquent, beautiful terms, he also says the most despicable (laughs) shit in that same voice that you're like, what the fuck did that guy just say? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it seems like he's fake like that with Teresa and her kids too. Very fake. Yeah. Doesn't he seem very fake? Yeah. Like he's not, ins- I don't, I don't think of him as insane. I mean, <laughs> obviously you can bring into I question feel like the to war- maintain being fake with your loved ones that much means you have something wrong with you. But what if it's just cameras, cameras, but I feel like they're all convinced that he's like that all the time. Like all of her kids are like obsessed with him and think he's the nicest guy in the world. They're easily, they're easily swayed by someone that appears really nice. Yeah. They don't. But then I'm like, I feel like the fact that everyone keeps bringing up that Teresa is so frail and stressed and stuff. I'm like, I understand that like dealing with court stuff would do that to you. But I also feel like it's an indicator of like your life. Like, I feel like her like body knows that like she's unsafe yeah dolores kind of um dolores hinted at that in the nicest way you could possibly say it where Teresa would never uh know what she's saying but she said that when louis was going through this emotional rocky time that Teresa was like taking the brunt of a lot of louis energy yeah so maybe that's sort of a way to just say that like louis is affecting the house negatively right um, why, why do you think that well uh, i was just gonna ask like why can't Teresa does does Teresa ever get tired of this like just blowing smoke up her ass nonstop? <laughs> i feel like well her brother says later in this where she's like he said she would never in a billion years admit if there was stress or yeah. a problem in the household rachel threw a um ozempic uh, accusation at <laughs> Teresa also in this scene yeah. she goes i'm not gonna start worrying about her being 90 pounds she's on ozempic yeah whatever (laughs) (laughs) i was like all right i'm tired but melissa was like he yeah melissa like that Um, danielle pumpkin time i wrote can we skip that i only just want to say that nate said he was invited to both guys night guys nights and she asked which one he would have gone to and he's like i would have gone to louis and i was like wrong i didn't like that loser i I can't believe he would have chose well if he once he sees the footage he knows where like thank god i didn't go to either wish you would be i do want to say that this this danielle i speak her praises a lot i really think she's a great cast member her confessionals are funny she said some great stuff to jen aiden which i love she has a compelling storyline i'll take as much bougie kids as she wants to give me home life is fun but this dad thing fucking died on the vine no it's she tried. Well, especially like knowing that the season was over. I'm like, why did they put this scene of her putting the olive branch out when we know it won't lead to anything? I, I don't know. And I don't know why this is not compelling. Ten, nine times out of ten, it would be compelling, this estrangement. But the fact that we've never seen the dad, it's so few and far between. And then whenever she texts the dad, he goes, I love you and I'm so proud of you and I miss you and I can't wait to see you. And it's like, right. what's wrong here? Yeah. What's going on? And a huge part of me thinks that the dad just does not want to be on camera. Yeah, and so maybe. maybe that's why. So right. I just want to say, I give Danielle a lot of credit, but this needs to end yeah this did not work out that, this, this plot line yeah um then we go to louis and Teresa, where this is where they're talking about margaret and he goes i hope margaret suffers i hope her son suffers the way they made our family suffer and yeah. she's like yeah our kids suffered from what they did but she doesn't go along with louis no suffering um no you can mantra. tell she's a little bit like don't say that you think a little bit her face is a little like oh god like she so she t- does try to like change that i mean imagine yeah. the fury if someone yeah. said that about her kids yeah i want like they're not suffer. even allowed to be mentioned without her going absolutely ape shit so Louis- if they said i hope uh gia melania adriana suffer. suffer it sounds i'll say it i'm not a huge louis defender it sounds awful to say i want to watch someone suffer right and a son it's insane so louis walked this back we talked about this we read his statement before the episode he said uh absolutely i wish i wouldn't have said um suffer sure he calls marge a disgusting vile human being she's garbage yep um and then um he says they're kind of doing a review of everybody he's like rachel and her husband are bottom feeders just wait until like his history comes out which 
question mark on all that shit what why um it, where's why is the restraint does do louis and Teresa know what you told me three weeks ago about john food has passed that he was basically doing a, a absolute power a heist <laughs> and had someone like tied up and was like yeah. what you told me was very very bad yeah i wonder if they know this at this point because i would not think for one second that Teresa and Louie would not bring that to light. They already said the drug dealer Paramus right. shit. So right. they must not know this yet. Right. But he is alluding to something horrible. Bigger. Right. Yeah. Um, he says Melissa's full of shit. Um, and Teresa says, you know, she says she'll never say never because you don't say that, which I'm like, oh, that's a bridge too far, apparently. Um, right. But she does say Louie is not stopping me. She clarifies for the audience, us. She says, Louie is not stopping me. You always say, if you repair your relationship with Joe, like, I'll be fine with it. Yeah. It's, it's me who is has made this decision. And Joe, she says, Joe knows I'm done with him. Yeah. Um, and she says she's glad that she kept the peace while their parents were alive. I guess that's the only reason their relationship even lasted. Beautiful, um, sweet moments of Nona and... No, no. No, no. And they are really sweet. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's a lot of good flashbacks of the, the Roni... Leg or sorry, um, New Jersey legacy that yeah. they pepper through this, and this it was goes a- between because then it goes over to Melissa and Joe. He's wearing No No's watch that he yeah. left to him, yep. and they're talking about what's going to happen. And this is where Joe says Teresa would never admit to stress in the household, and then they show um, a family drama montage mm-hmm. of like how many times Teresa and Melissa have gotten into it like all the fucked up shit they've said to each other, like going back to like yeah. the christening. 2011. And yeah. then there's like these huge major fights they've had. The one I want to watch again is when Melissa is on her knees saying, please stop <laughs> yeah. hurting us. I think that's also the same one where Joe Judice and Gorga get in a fight and Joe His has hair dye, hair dye smears all... on the wall. <laughs> they're like, what the fuck is Joe Judice? Like what the fuck is Giuliani. all over me? It was a full Giuliani. <laughs> I have to watch that again. Oh yeah, he didn't go gracefully into his balding era. No, it yeah. took him a while. He went raging against that yeah. night. It's um, also wild, as we talked about before, how different everyone looks whenever they do these flashbacks. Yeah. It's insane. Also, Joe reiterates again really quickly. He just tells us what Louie did with his limited time in the family. And he yeah. stole the pizza thing. It was going to be called No-No's Pizza. Or yeah. I forget. It was going to be called... The skinny Italian oven. He, he immediately... Uh, did that fucked him over twice they he started the rumors about all the fines on on joe's construction business and then they show louie bringing that up this kind of smear campaign against joe and you watch joe gorga's eyes i was kind of stunned i've never seen him look like this he kind of like rolls his his eyes back like kind of sad like he cannot believe that joe just went there with him it's like oh this is like bad for our relationship like he's so disappointed that louie yeah brought that up at right. the reunion yeah um okay then we get to rails steakhouse which i had forgotten was there was a fight a million years ago jacqueline i do not remember this fight for the life of me yeah i know that jacqueline Teresa had a tumultuous relationship towards the end but i do not remember this rails fight but they want to go back as like a for a retrospective i guess so um so dolores is there first and then they all come one by one. A lot of black fashion. Yeah. Rachel's full mob wife, like fur coat. Um, and so they're all sitting down. Teresa arrives last. She immediately, because they tried to make enemies sit across from each other so they could be head to head. Yeah. A lot of good um, entrances just while yeah. we're talking about it. They- I was thinking about how they kept a camera guy outside for each entrance. Yeah. They make a moment of each entrance. And they kind of give you a little snapshot of like a, a, um, a defining moment in their run. Sorry to the YouTube watchers. Uh, you know what I mean? Like they have, yeah. like but when Melissa shows up, they show this, like, which I love New Jersey, like the entire experience of watching it. I could almost watch it again now and like just watch, like, I don't remember yeah. some of these iconic moments, like the ski lift where right. Teresa's like, yeah, I don't remember I, any of that shit. She's like, I love I love you now. Don't ever do anything to be disloyal to me again. Well, you can tell that like any time that Teresa and Melissa had any peace at all, it was like very like Tenure. doomed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite moments in Jersey history is when uh, Teresa uh, Melissa has never seen The Godfather and mm-hmm. Teresa's entire 
being is based off the Godfather code. And there's one episode that ends with Melissa or Teresa taking Melissa into her family room and says, she says, let's go watch the Godfather part <laughs> one together. And then they just end the episode. <laughs> Do you think they did? I, Melissa <laughs> never, the next episode, I was waiting for her to give her a review of the Godfather. She never talked about it again. So it's one wow. of those unsolved mysteries. Wow. Um, okay. So then Teresa enters and she's like, I'm not sitting across from Margaret. She goes, you're going to end up wearing all that. I'm going to try to control myself as in like the food in front of her. She's, Did you like that? <laughs> uh, she kind of scares me. Teresa? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was nice that she acknowledged that. <laughs> it's nice. It's quite, well, no. It was it, it was a iconic entrance as a tree. If know, I sit by you, you, I will attack you. I will be throwing food all over you. You know what I mean? I don't know. It was just it was it was it was. Teresa, know thyself. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So then Dolores and I don't know why Jen Fessler was a co-host of this, except that she has no beef with anyone. I yeah, guess that's it. But so, it, it, yeah, they well, do like an introduction. They're both neutral seemingly although Fessler has now I think solidified herself more on the Margaret side of things but Jackie aligned herself with that right faction and so Dolores and Jen are like the only ones left I don't think Dolores needed a co-host no. but I guess it was just helpful right. and also Jen Fessler didn't have any drama with anybody right um so then we get Jen Aiden and Danielle um one-on-one -on -one. um they're starting with the charity budget drama which i'm like we're still talking about this well, can i say my take on that okay jen aiden started a feud out of absolutely nothing yeah she she went after danielle for no reason when danielle thought they were friends which jen aiden does because she fakes stuff for storylines danielle is stunned that a someone that she considered a friend would do this because she doesn't know how this show works and how awful jen aiden is as a participant in this yeah so she's pretty stunned that it it went there and it, it it's it's just spiraled from all, a fully um fabricated jen aiden storyline against her so i think that i i just there's no i give jen aiden no benefit of the doubt here yeah because this is not real on jen aiden's side but it's very real on danielle's side right Do you know what i mean yeah because it's like about her character. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, it immediately spirals. Jen Aiden says she's jealous of everything she has. She says, um, I'm laughing at you. You're a clown. And then Danielle goes, well, when I get home at the end of the day, my husband's waiting for me at the door. And Jen goes, yeah, your husband with the boobs, you got the brawn. And then Danielle immediately lunges across the table. And I'm just like, I mean, obviously it was just like a stupid low blow, but I'm like, he's like one of the like cutie husbands. Like no one thinks like, I was like, that was like worthless. I'm glad you said that. Um, like so he's I not like a gross slob. So I think he's really handsome. I think everyone does. Yeah. We all think he's handsome. He was in that fireman, the fireman yeah, calendar like from he's last like season. A good looking guy. That's the one that Megan and I, we just keep it on that page. <laughs> um, it's here. Here's what happened. Danielle cannot believe how despicable Jen Aiden is. Yeah. It's shocking to, uh, to see someone go that low. Right. When they were your friend at the start of a season, to know that they fully just faked an entire grievance against you. And then not only are they doing that, faking everything, ruining your friendship, acting like a piece of shit to you. And then they go for a low blow about your husband's appearance. Yeah. And then when Danielle talks about in the aftermath of why that got to her, she says something like Nate is going to be so sad when he sees that. And I'm just like thinking of Nate, who's maybe not confident or comfortable on the show and he doesn't like to get in it. And he's not a part of the drama that then all of a sudden when he watches this and he hears that he was criticized for having man breasts, right. I could just imagine how hurt yeah. Danielle felt in that moment. And I never advocate for violence, even though nothing, you know, she just, she left it. But I just, I can see where Danielle was coming from in that yeah. moment. It's like, she cannot believe Jen Aiden is seriously, is almost bordering on, on evil to her yeah. in that moment. Yeah. And, um, what Jen did is indefensible to me. Yeah. Her entire arc 
this season is indefensible to yeah, me. Yeah, she stands for nothing. Yeah, I, I do. I did love Danielle. I just want to give her the moment before we move past. I did love when she said, um, I know when you're home alone, you cry <laughs> at night. And I was yeah. just like, the way Danielle said that, I forget exactly what she said. It was something just like that. Yeah. It was like, I know you cry. Danielle gave her all to that line reading. Yeah. It was it was powerful. Yeah. I know you cry. Yeah. And then we had just heard from Nate that Dill sleeps in the pool house. <laughs> yeah. And well, they had that whole couples therapy storyline where they were like really having issues and he's never home and like yeah. blah, blah, blah. So it's like weird that she um, is just acting like nothing ever happened or like they have no issues or whatever. Because I'm like, you literally had a storyline about like you guys having marital issues. Jen, and because we're getting over the Jen thing, but Jane, uh, Jen, sorry, Jen Aiden's like, her energy, I, I, I have never seen whatever energy she is trying to exude at this uh, dinner. I've never seen anything. I don't know if it's a combination of completely fake and performative, but also really like excited. I, everything about her, I think, was fake in this at yeah. this dinner. And I, I've just I haven't seen anybody like that in a long time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Danielle lunges across the table. They immediately, they were prepared. They had security already. So <laughs> it's the minute that Danielle, um, leapt over the table and then Teresa's the first one to like, uh, take the brunt of it. Uh, yeah. she comes and like shields, uh, everyone, but you see that there are like six security oh, yeah. they knew. guards there. They knew this was dangerous to begin with. And then the rest of the dinner, you see them all yeah. standing. They've literally guards. already fought these two yeah so they're I, you now see them for the rest of the episode you yeah. see all of the guards that they have there yeah so Teresa, when she gets up she goes cut it out and melissa goes cut it out you're the queen of this shit and Teresa goes fuck you and they just like are th- a lot of f-bombs yes um glad i watched it on peacock i guess i loved it too uh i think that uh, the minute that the energy got heated Teresa and Melissa just wanted to go at it. I mean, Melissa took the opportunity first, but it immediately devolves into them calling each other. Teresa calls uh, Melissa a whore over yeah. and over again. Melissa goes, she learned from the best white trash. And she goes, whore, whore. And this is where Melissa goes, I'm Antonia's mom. I'll tell her you think I'm a whore. And she goes, my brother married a whore. And then they're sort of like posing at each other. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Melissa's posing more. Why do you think, why do you think at the drop of the hat, the minute that, that this, this, you know, this, uh, scuffle happened that Melissa yeah. was so ready to just go I at know. Teresa. I saw people hypothesizing online that, um, because obviously she has what, three kids, two boys and a girl. Oh yeah. Um, Gio, um, Antonio, someone online who was like a Teresa Stan. So, you know, but they think that it's like, um, a like dog whistle um stab jab that um Teresa's mom's name is Antonia. So she said she likes to always bring up Antonia to be like, my daughter's name is Antonia. Oh, like, like your mother's <laughs> namesake. Yeah. Now we'll be learning that her aunt yeah. called their mother a whore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whether that's the case, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's worth bringing up. Yeah, I mean, it is I guess true. She's her god. Teresa's her godmother, but I think that might be true of the boys too. But yeah, yeah. I know someday they're gonna work this out. <laughs> Absolutely. Then Danielle, they have a huddle because LV comes in. This is the producer, which you know, fully on cam. Yeah, and uh, uh, LV is like, you can tell she's completely flustered. Jane Aiden says, "I don't think Danielle should be here anymore." After you know, lunging yeah. at me with whatever Danielle's you know across like, the table. Don't make me go. And Jen Fester's like, "I'll go." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Danielle says, please don't make me go, which yeah. is kind of sad because she's already dealt with this earlier in the season. The producer's like, I mean, if you're flinging shit, like, I don't know what you yeah. want me to do. Yeah. And then Danielle goes to compose herself and uh, Teresa comes with her, which I was like, this is interesting. Like, Teresa likes Danielle enough to like want to talk to her. But she was her. being annoying. She was. She was like, Margaret's the real evil. Like, it's all about <laughs> Margaret. And, and everyone's like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Danielle's <laughs> like, don't fucking talk yeah. to me right now. Like, this is not the time. And then Danielle says, she's so fucking dirty, bro. And that's where I'm like, oh, man, it, it's this is hitting Danielle hard because she can't believe a person acts like this. Yeah. That's that's what it is to me. I just think she's very, very shocked at what Jen Aiden became in her life. And I'm yeah. shocked too. I'm yeah. shocked by Jen's behavior. 
Yeah. So then she has to compose herself. Jen is at the table going, she's fucking aggressive. Uh, <laughs> she starts doing this, like, she, I feel like a che- cheerleader. She's uh, uh, aggressive. I'm like, Jen, you were on your own fucking planet right yeah. now. Her energy is so off. Yeah, it was weird. She was, like, disassociating. <laughs> she was. Um, and then Jen Fester's like, I'm fucking out of here. You guys have gotten used to this level of disgusting, but I'm not here he, for this. Yeah. Well, I forget what she says. She has a line where she's like, either we smash glass or we oh. break bread, but yeah. I don't do two in the same dinner. Right. I really... Is I, that a Jewish thing? No, smash glass, like breaking glass at a table. I was I was picturing Me, the of course. wedding thing. Me too. <laughs> um, where, you, where you break a glass under your foot. And- Which is what you're supposed to be getting rid of the bad shit now. I think that's what that is. Oh, is that what it is? I don't know. Like the bad shit is in that thing. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. We'll 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 hear after this. Um, but why I don't, you know, I'm I'm a person that's adverse averse to toxicity. But even I don't think that if I was coordinating this dinner, I would be so put off that I sure. couldn't stomach any more of it. Yeah, I mean, but by the end, everyone was saying like, "I need a nap." Like that took everything out of me. Like everyone was like, "Jesus Christ!" So I feel like, yeah, there must be something even more negative than yeah. we can imagine. Yeah, Jen Fester, did something else happen that you also left <laughs> because of? Because I don't know fully if I would have just left halfway through a dinner based right. off just that. Right. Um. Because I feel like usually, I mean, Danielle was the one that was upset in this instance, but I feel like if she wasn't involved, she would be like, get out the popcorn. Like, I feel like usually she thinks yeah. everything is funny. I know. I, I didn't understand why Jen uh, left, really. Yeah. And so then um, they ask Dolores asks Jen Aiden if it's okay if Danielle stays like she's like do you feel threatened is it okay if she stays and she's like I give her permission to stay like I'm not threatened like it's fine yeah so they just make her move to the end of the table and then this is where we get into Teresa and Margaret the timeline of facts yep um because uh, Margaret is saying here that March 2022 is the first time she talked to the ex. Yeah. Teresa says she's lying. The subpoena was in 2021, which she did not show up for. Yeah. And she's like, well, if I did, I would say I hadn't talked to her yet. Yeah. So, but then Dolores goes in her confessional. She's like, you told me that you hadn't talked to her in 2022. You said yeah. 2021 and then a break. So Dolores is kind of, finding out in real time that margaret has been lying right you know what i mean yeah and like and then so you could imagine and also dolores thinks that margaret's lying about saying that she was going to go to the reunion review so dolores right. is like kind of looking askance at, at margaret here. right and then we get a little confessional from jackie saying that the pre-reunion review was in fact a louis takedown she said she had denied that fact previously but that is what it was and i'm like so no, yeah, I don't I'm like care. he was the common enemy. Uh, yeah, I don't care at all about it, but but call it what it is. Yeah, I mean, you all are meeting to <laughs> to talk about how you're going to uh, uh, enact. Yeah, your, I your... don't think that's uncommon. No, it's not. Melissa said it's not uncommon. Yeah. She said that it happens on all different Housewives franchises. Yeah. They bring it up actually on, on Miami in the third season. They talk about all meeting together to discuss something. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then this is where Teresa goes to Margaret. You're full of shit. That's why you married a plumber, you disgusting pig. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't get the you're full of shit. Yeah, it so, was a little joke. Uh, that really was? Yeah plungers plunge shit out of toilet well no they don't but she was just using the combination of toilet yeah. and shit yeah. to and, and this is like, i think this is the second time she said this i, I think yeah she's, she's, she the thing is before i feel like she previously was derogatory about him being a plumber and then this time it was a joke about her being full of shit but then everyone just ran with it that she was being derogatory about a plumber again yeah. which i understand because she, immediately after she called her a disgusting pig so i'm like you don't assume that she meant anything kind right you know but then that's where margaret's like i love to fuck the plumber i'll fuck the plumber all she, day she admitted he she admitted he was like Mar- mario the <laughs> yeah. plumber do you remember in, yeah. in an earlier episode yeah and she brings up that Teresa's dad was a cobbler which i didn't know that that's amazing to know <laughs> and um, she goes fuck you yeah and then rachel uh, and uh, Teresa go at it a little bit rachel wants sort of a piece if i remember correctly yes right uh, because talk- Teresa says margaret is the one who brought up the 
FUDA investigation right. claim. And Rachel's like, no, we have a family friend who's the one that told us, yeah. you fat fucking hot dog lit mouth bitch or whatever. Yeah, hot dog lit. <laughs> they're just saying fuck like a million times. Yeah. And then Margaret has the, um, what What do you say? She's got bombshell. the bombshell in her pocket <laughs> and she wants the to deploy it. The bombshell Teresa wishes she had last week. Yes. And she wants to deploy it uh, strategically. So she kind of lets Rachel and Teresa have that moment. And then she's really setting up for her big moment uh, here. She talks about the warrior video, which I yes. didn't know what that was called. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that they internally referred to it as the warrior video, which <laughs> yeah. I like to know. And then uh, Terry says, like, you leaked that. You know, you yeah. leaked that out. And then there's um, Teresa keeps interrupting Margaret, so she can't get the perfect uh, landing or, or takeoff for what she wants to say. So finally, she just has to, like, scream it. Yeah. And she says, the bombshell is that Jackie had Louis X over to her house in 2021 yeah right yeah right before the warrior vid was released and jackie goes are you out of your fucking mind full are, denial yeah are you out of your fucking mind absolutely not no fucking way she's really <laughs> really um that's defending. like so embarrassing when you go full one way and then eventually es especially go back. to know someone is lying in the same scene i feel like we don't get a lot of opportunities because normally if we catch someone lying we don't know until yeah. way in the future and they have to show a flashback but we get to see somebody busted in a huge fucking lie right in the moment yeah um and then margaret's like yeah i didn't even fucking know till last week yeah. um i called her ex uh, last week and uh she goes why would jackie go to that uh meeting about um about you because i went to her freaking house yep um and it was um she was like send me the screenshot send me the timeline it was february 25th 2021 and then you can see it, her wheels turning and she just turns to Teresa and goes i met with her yeah she goes, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to mess what was going on between us up. So that's <laughs> She why goes, we hated each other at the time. That's when you went after my husband. And Margaret goes, you subpoenaed the wrong bitch. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, amazing. And then now, um, you know, Teresa's entire argument was that Margaret is the root of all evil and has been pulling all the strings and is detrimental to her health and mental well-being and Louis's life or whatever. And then when Margaret releases this bombshell, which is that Jackie now could basically have all of those accusations pinned upon her. The warrior video could have come out from her. Yeah. Any leaking of abusive behavior could have come from her. But Teresa, unfortunately, like the train outside of rails, her mind is just on one track <laughs> and it takes her a really long time to process this new information in the moment. <laughs> yeah, it has not, the message has not come through. And, seemingly. and everyone has to check. <laughs> Dolores says... Yeah, I'm not sure right now if Teresa understands because <laughs> Teresa even says, huh, to Jackie when Jackie tells her what she did. Yeah. She's not really getting it. And then Melissa needs to check around the room and she goes, Jen, <laughs> she goes, Jen Aiden, did you hear what just happened? That Jackie yeah. was there. And Jen is responding appropriately. Yeah. She knows that Jackie is completely fucked right now. Yeah. This is a huge bombshell. And Teresa's trying to be like, she's like, I'm okay with it because uh, uh, she goes, I get why she did it. I'm like, huh? Yeah. At the very least, you have to you have to um, think that at least half of the hatred that you're harboring for Margaret now has to dissipate because you learned that someone else did a lot of what you're accusing Margaret of doing. At right. the very least, yeah. you can still hate Margaret, but Jackie has to get some of the brunt because Margaret is not responsible for as much as you think she is. Right. And this is where Jen says, um, she's like, sometimes Teresa has delayed reactions. Right. So I think it might take her a minute uh, to figure out this is fucked up. Yep. And but everyone's like this is huge this is crazy like everyone's like holy shit yeah um and then jackie's like all right i'm gonna leave we'll, we'll talk later and she's like okay and dolores is like i think she needs a diaper in her car she's gonna shit her pants yeah jackie is about to take a full-blown shit in her pants she's gonna need pampers on her way home <laughs> she says yeah danielle goes how did bo deedle not get jackie and then they go because bo deedle didn't know where to look and they're kind of <laughs> having this um 
a little bit of the Salt Lake City energy, which I think you yeah. were talking about last week, yeah. right? Yeah, they do. They kind of have this meeting in the minds after they're like, "This is a big twist that we're, yeah. we're that we're wrapping our heads around." Yeah, and then Jackie has to walk her diapered ass <laughs> outside, and you watch her walk to the corner where everybody is talking shit about and her. Take and they go, three steps back. They go, "That bitch is coming around the corner. She's about to come around the corner." And then you watch Jackie walk away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was just quiet enough that no one suspected her. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. And also they, they don't understand why they do. It's just funny. I think it's just kind of ridiculous that Jackie has this huge hypocritical moment where she's trying to align herself with Teresa for a storyline. And then it turns out that you have this, one of the worst accusations you could ever tell Teresa, which is that you met with his hating ass at ex your and house. at your house. And uh, I, I would love to know, I mean, I guess in the aftermath extended edition that we're going to get next week or whatever that addendum is, like we're going to find out Teresa's reaction to this. But I have a feeling that she's just not going to give Jackie the brunt of what this, you right. know, of what this truly means. Right. Like why does Teresa hate Margaret so much. I would watch the compilation of that. I want to see how their relationship devolved because it's unfortunately it's too hard to remember seven years of yeah. of feuding. But I know that it has to do. They keep showing the instances where Teresa did think Margaret was behind the scenes leaking about out a bunch of shit. And we do. I do think Margaret is a little bit responsible for some of that. But yeah. Jackie is too. And it's something. It's a field they all play on. If that's the right way to say it, they all do this. Yeah. Teresa is not above getting shit no. about another person. She she deals in that every single day. They talk about how they got Margaret's ex best friend to just sit down at a table and say every horrible, despicable. thing. Thing yeah. about Margaret that they could find on camera. I mean, she historically was always bringing up that Melissa was a stripper or cheated yeah. or like whatever. Tr- like, yeah. she's always like, I'm not spreading rumors. I'm just saying what I heard. Who were the two people that were always spinning around behind the scenes, oh, leveling like accusations? Kim, Kim G. D. And Kim, yeah. Kim D. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Teresa's a big rules for thee, but not for me person. Uh, yes. 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 Um, so, yeah, everyone leaves. Everyone's exhausted. Dolores stays and sits alone at the table and they're showing a montage and she goes, this group is no longer a family. Yeah. And she says that she sees this sit down like a death. Yeah. And she's just, it ends with her staring out at the sunset, looking (laughs) at the wreckage of their dinner at the table. And yeah, she says, this is a death. And I think that that's, um, uh, pretty overblown. Yeah. An overblown reaction to what happened here. Right. I mean, if this was any other franchise and this was their finale, finale, we would be saying, that was a good finale. I can't wait to watch the reunion to see all this new information, how that plays out in the, a three-part reunion. Right. Like, right. Yeah, Andy, what he keeps saying over and over again is that his understanding of the meaning of re- a reunion is to come to an understanding and that the vibe was that that it was not possible here. But I'm like, how many reunions have we watched where there's no resolution? Like, yeah, there a, are long lot. running feuds that never get resolved on some franchises. The the crux of the whole the 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 um implacable, is that the right word? Dynamics is is Margaret, Melissa, and Teresa. Jen and well, I, I don't think they want Jen back ever again. But I'm just saying all the other ones are are um, resolvable feuds. And even Dolores and Margaret, I, like I said at the beginning of the episode, had a spark of some simmering feud that they would have to get over and talk about. Yeah. So there's still new dynamics at play here that I think that they that a reunion would be warranted, yeah. um, at least for me. So I guess you, I think I, I believe you when you said some shit is just going on behind the scenes that yeah. we have no idea about that Andy and Bravo and LV and <laughs> the production like company cannot <laughs> The tolerate. lawyer and Bo Deedle and um, all this, like these but weirdos. They're, they're having production meetings and table reads and Bo Deedle's in the plants in the meeting <laughs> right behind them taking notes. Yeah, he's like, I'm the new producer from Evolution Media. And they're yeah. like, who are you? And they get to the <laughs> bottom of the water cooler at Evolution and they get to the bottom and then Bo Deedle's head is just in the water jar because he's been standing there for months. I'm obsessed with Bo Deedle. Me too. I really want to, um, I always say I want to interview everybody, but yeah. I, I do want to, I would love to ask him a couple questions. They should do like a Hulu, like, um, special on the down and dirty investigators of Bo- Jersey. Yeah, they should. You know, 
who does those? ABC? Yeah. It's so they the can get line. some Bravo love. They don't probably know enough about the like the <laughs> major fucked up shit that's going on in Jersey. Yeah. Someone should put that on there. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was giving Amy the turtle time signal with my phone where I blast sun in her eyes. I'm so sorry. They don't, I don't think they know about Jersey enough to know about this Bo Deedle shit that yeah. he's disguising himself and going to the therapy sessions to get dirt yeah. on for his clients. Yeah, I feel like it's even juicier than the Tom Girardi one. Yeah. Or what was the second one? Um, Was it Rand? He had oh, one. He had one. I for, yeah, it was him. They need to do a Monica There's a one. There's a Scandal one. They need to do a Monica yeah. one, too, from yeah. uh, Salt Lake City. Tom Girardi's on trial this week. He's wearing like a literal like David Byrne we're, jacket. We're going. <laughs> I, to, I told you. We're, you got I his think, passes? Yeah. I, I, I got... Um, it's easy to get in. Oh, I, okay. I, I got us in, so we can we can talk to uh, Tom, and we can Great. investigate that. Well, good. Um, here, hold on one second. <laughs> I think... Truly, after did we pull it together in the think end? After one of the worst starts in Turtle Time <laughs> history, those first thirty minutes, those will go down in history as some of the worst, the news worst news segment we've ever done. I think once we had the power of that Jersey finale, we got somewhere. Don't you think? I think so. We needed a subject matter. We can't just spin our wheels talking about <laughs> movies and other shit. So I hope that you were able to make it past those first thirty minutes. I'm sure people did right yeah hopefully we didn't have any first time listeners oh my god and i'll say it right now if you if you do not review turtle time this week absolutely not i this is not indicative of the overall quality um so please just take a week off from reviewing yeah us. my sleep score was in the 60s last was it night really yeah i think i would have gotten a 55 Oof. yeah it, it was so rough i was tossing and turning i couldn't sleep i had nightmares yeah um Okay, we'll implode without eight hours. We had only an hour and a half episode, but at least an hour of it were was good. That's <laughs> usually some podcasts just have hour episodes. It's true. So the fact that we gave them thirty minutes of shit and then an hour of <laughs> decent is almost like we're a decent podcast. Yeah. yeah, and then next week we'll be overloaded because we'll have two OC episodes to talk about. Yeah. Um, which you know I think it's a pretty good season, so I think we'll have. Good yeah. stuff to talk about. Yeah. I mean, I'll say it now. Also, we, I am going to go on paternity leave. And so you're going to notice that there's some non-topical <laughs> shit coming up. I think one of the ideas we're batting around is Turtle Time Trip, where you and I talk about one of the famed housewives trips in history. Like yeah. Some of the best trips that we never will cover on Turtle Time. We might do that as some like, you know, content while I'm away taking care of uh, my newborn daughter. Yes. Do you want to say you want to advertise Patreon? <laughs> sure. If you couldn't get enough after today's example, uh, we are reviewing or recapping yeah. Vanderpump Rules from the very beginning, which at this point we're on season five. So if you join now, you'll have access to like 70 episodes. Yeah. Um, and we have just gotten to... The, I guess you would describe it as the Tom and Katie wedding season, yep. which is a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's, it's... Uh, yeah, every week a bonus episode and uh, you get access to the posts on there with all the fun comments from all of our Patreons and it's fun. Yeah. Fun times. Our wonderful Villa Rosa VIPs who have created a really safe, fun space for comments and, and sweet notes to to us and we love it so much and um and we also we've recorded almost a month of the patreon and so we know that they're going to be good episodes we can just advertise right now all yeah. four are absolute masterpieces bangers. yeah complete bangers <laughs> so anyway that's how you can help amy and i we're so sorry for today's episode but we hope you'll stand <laughs> stick with us stand stand by and uh we'll see you next week right i hope so yeah i, I this won't be the end of turtle time right <laughs> it wasn't it's like the video goes black and white. Could you imagine? <laughs> Turtle Time ends in full disgrace. They just delete our account. Oh, my God. I uh, We don't need you to toot our horns that this episode was good. We know it was pure shit for the first 30 minutes. But we will. I'm almost positive Amy and I will be back next week. Yeah. All right. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. This one's for you.